Hi guys, this is a iPod Touch 6th generation screen repair. Uh, we're going to start off with the tools you need. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have a screw mat, heat gun, a uh, Phillips screwdriver, and a razor blade. Uh, you can buy these razor blades at most Walmarts or um, AC Moores. Alright, so let's get into it. First you want to start off by heating up the bottom part a little bit with the heat gun. Just take the razor blade and stick it right in the bottom part and pry up on it. It just lifts right up. I also have this stainless steel guitar pick. It's really nice for the tight spots to squeeze into. There are clips running along both sides, so just gotta figure out where each one is. I think there's three on each side. Three or four. Oops. And once you get all those, it should lift right up. the inside. Now what you want to do is uh, unscrew all of the uh, the shield screws so then we can lift that up and get to the motherboard. There. Looks like there's 13 screws that need to come out. Uh, the internals for this one they are actually the exact same as the fifth generation uh, iPod Touch, so if you've done that one before, then this one's pretty easy too. Alright, now that you got those screws out, uh, you can actually take the shield off now. You want to go pry underneath it right there. It's still kind of clipped in on the side, so um, it just comes right out once you get them unclipped. Alright, so once you get the shield off, uh, there's just a few more screws to go through, uh, these three up here on the motherboard, and then also these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six down here. Um, so I'm just going to start by taking these six out first.
and I believe this is the only different part um, from the fifth gen to the sixth generation. Um, this home button flex right here um, looks slightly different. Um, so I guess we'll see how that goes. <laughs> then there's also these three on the motherboard, these three screws. There are a couple of different ways uh, to actually open these up uh, to replace the screen assembly. Um, I prefer this way because it's a little, it might take a little bit longer, but um, definitely makes things easier. Not as tight of a squeeze um, for some of the connections. Um, but now that we got that out, we can actually remove the battery. Um, I'm just gonna get a couple plastic tools. Pry up on the edge right here. Do you want to be gentle with it though? Uh, just because if the batteries get too uh, bent, it can definitely destroy them. Let's see. Use one of these metal spudgers. Okay, and so to remove the battery, you actually have to heat up the back side a little bit with the heat gun. Um, I'm just going to do that real quick. Once you get that done, um, it should be a lot easier to remove the battery. I'm just going to use the metal spudger and get right underneath it and kind of flip it out because um, that's the way the flex cable goes for it. Um, then once we got that we can start pulling out the charger port loudspeaker portion. Um, then after you get that you can actually just flip up the whole motherboard. Um, that way we can get to the LCD and digitizer connections. So I'll go ahead and unclip the LCD, which is just this one on the left side. Oops. There we go. And the digitizer, which is on the far right. Once we got that, we can actually pull the screen off. Make sure the front camera comes out. There you go. There's the remove screen. All we need from it is this home button if your new assembly didn't come with it. Alright, now time to put the new screen on. Now, this is probably the trickiest part of the um, the whole repair, but it's definitely a lot easier this way compared to doing it. Uh, I'm trying to do it the shorter way. LCD plugged in. And try to get this better view. And the digitizer. So once you got those both clipped back in, uh, you can just pull the motherboard back down. Uh, make sure you get the charger port and headphone jack to fit in correctly. Flip the battery back in. And then 
and make sure everything fits back in how it did before. Now that you got that, you can actually put the motherboard screws back in. Now for the headphone jack screws. And the charger port. Finally, the loudspeaker. Now once you have all that back in, uh, you can put the, the shield back on, um, so it just clips right back in. Alright, now what I like to do next is just test out the screen before I clip it all back together. Um, there you go. It's powering up, so that's a good sign. Let's see. All right. I just like to make sure all the digitizers work and there's no dead spots or anything. And that seems all good. So I'm going to go ahead and close it up completely. Um, so I'm just going to put the rest of these screws back in that held down the shield. And for this portion right here, um, sometimes you will need to replace this adhesive. Um, for mine, it was fairly still preserved, so I'm just going to keep it like that. Um, the clips in this iPod version, they really do hold the screen down well, so um, you don't really have to replace it every time. And this also is a fifth generation iPod touchscreen, um, so they definitely do work on the sixth gen, um, if anybody was wondering. Let's get these last three screws in. Just gonna make sure this camera is connected into the 
uh, this holder right here. Then put the screen, start putting the screen down. Make sure it's clipped in at the top. And once that's good, you can put the whole screen back down. And it should all clip in. There you have it. Alright guys, thanks for watching.